What's up everyone? Welcome to my YouTube channel. Are you confused? Well, so am I. What is the difference between CPTSD, which is complex PTSD, or BPD, which is borderline personality disorder? They're in two totally different categories. So who came up with this lovely idea to take most of the traits in borderline personality disorder and pin them on PTSD? So I have watched so many videos, I've read so many articles, and I leave it and come back to it and I'm usually so confused. Well, now I feel like I finally kind of understand, and so I'm going to try to explain it to you. There are some things that I may say that no one else says because this is me trying to make sense of this and I'm just taking you on the journey with me. So I'm going to try to make it super clear. And if you disagree with what I'm saying, please let me know. If you get nothing else out of this video, I want you to hold on to this concept that CPTSD is driven by safety and BPD is driven by abandonment. Yes, there might be a little bit of abandonment issues going on underneath the surface with CPTSD. And of course, borderlines may have some preoccupation with safety, but who is in the driver's seat? What is creating most of the issue with each of these? CPTSD has to be driven by safety concerns. Is everything okay? Am I okay? Are you okay? They want to feel safe because of the trauma that they experienced. Borderlines are driven by abandonment issues. Are you going to leave me? Are you going to stay? Do I have to worry about you leaving me? That is what they are preoccupied and that's what drives their behavior. So just think if you're CPTSD and you hear a noise, you're worried about money or can I feed myself or what was that noise or what just happened? That's where their attention stays on all the time. I just want to feel safe. Borderlines are going to drive everything by please don't leave me. Please don't leave me that's going to take precedence over everything. Now let's add a little bit more to the puzzle. So with CPTSD, the self is intact. BPD, the self is not intact. And I'm not saying that this is a perfect picture of either one of them, but I just want to make this as clear as possible. The CPTSD person, you're going to see more of a self that's steady, that's stable. I know who I am. They will tell you, I know who I am. I know what my goals are. I know what my priorities are. I know what my character makeup is. Like I'm strong. I'm competent. I want things done a certain way. I like who I am. I know what I expect from other people. The borderline BPD does not have an, a strong intact sense of self. They can shift who they are because they there is an issue with object permanence so they may change styles they may change their hair they may be into their religion that that's their focus they may have a gender issue that they you know one minute they're one way and then the next minute they've shifted and then the next thing you know they're into habitat for humanity and then they're into dogs and cats and making sure that they're okay or they're into punk rock like they don't have a sense of self so if you ask them who are you describe yourself borderlines are going to have more of a problem with telling you who they are with someone with cptsd they're gonna be pretty much the same now they may struggle a little bit as well with give me some some verbs or some nouns or something that describes you. They may struggle with that a little bit too, 
But at the core, you don't see this big shifting in who they are. They're very steady. Even if they like doing different things, trying different things, being creative, they sort of have their area. I'm a great public speaker. Next puzzle piece, CPTSD, people are more independent. Borderlines are more clingy. That the CPTSD person is gonna be more independent the BPD is going to be more clingy. So the CPTSD person, for example, may push people away, whereas the BPD is going to be drawing people in. They're going to be finding people to be their favorite person because who am I without you? You, Your identity is my identity. A CPTSD person is going to be comfortable more than likely being alone in a lot of situations unless there's something driven by a safety need if they're freaking out it's because safety where's my safety so now maybe i do want you around but other than that i don't need people around me all the time i'm fine so there's more of an independence whereas a borderline is going to be needy is going to be clingy because why abandonment please don't leave me CPTSD, they're not going to have that issue as strongly. CPTSD is more independent. I can function on my own, whereas BPD usually needs a sidekick, somebody that's pouring into the narcissist need narcissistic supply. Borderlines kind of need a supply as well, even though it's a different kind. Now here is something that they both have in common. They both have emotional dysregulation. Emotional dysregulation refers to the inability of a person to control or regulate their emotional responses. Both have this in common and this is an area of great difficulty. If you can't regulate your emotions, why? Because CPTSD is in a freaked out, I'm worried about my safety a great majority of the time. I'm hypersensitive to the environment, to things going wrong, to things going badly because in my childhood things weren't always safe, right? Borderline, they have emotional dysregulation because you might abandon me, you might leave me, and if I even sense that that's going to happen, I'm going to go a little crazy. Both of these people can be super sensitive to slights. They cannot regulate their emotions very well. And a lot of times they can go into rages or they can be yelling or talking like this. And then you question them like, are you angry at me? And then they can both have some issues with connecting with their emotions and how they are projecting outward to other people and taking ownership. If you're always in a fear state like a CPTSD person, then you're not going to be able to calm yourself down enough to even think straight, right? Same thing with borderline. If you're always worried that people are going to leave you, it's hard to focus. They can feel very triggered and then just go off the deep end. And this can make them really difficult to get along with, to stay connected with them when they go into these emotional states. Next puzzle piece. One of the criteria for borderline personality disorder is that they will have at least one area of acting out, whether it's acting out sexually or it's over shopping or reckless driving or stealing or binging, binge eating. They're going to have some out of control acting out area. But you can also see this sometimes in someone with CPTSD. They may not have as many ways to act out, but they may drink or they might be spendaholics. And the reason is it differs in both. CPTSD is trying to numb themselves. If you're always feeling anxious, you need a way to calm down. So if I'm always shopping and finding deals and overspending and buying myself things, just the shopping experience can be very calming. It could be something exciting that gets their energy going, right? Drinking, it is a way to numb out that over anxiety that they're feeling inside 
a low functioning borderline, you're going to see that previous area with a ton of acting out. They may not be able to get it together enough to hold down a job, right? But here's an area that they can both have in common, and that's being workaholics. And this is high functioning borderlines and people would see PTSD. They can be workaholics and they can also be very high achievers in the workplace. In the workplace, they may have several projects going that they are completing and getting done very well, but they need a ton of things to stay busy and preoccupied. I see in both of these a tendency to be workaholics, why it keeps the mind busy. BPD is externally driven because there's a lot of emptiness in the internal makeup. There are issues there, right? CPTSD is always anxious, worried about safety, freaking out. But if they learn to channel their energy into overworking, hobbies, craft projects, um, things that they're doing at work. I've got a new idea and I'm going to execute that. It helps them so much. It gives them a place of stability. It makes them feel even kill. I'm getting something done. I'm being productive. I'm pouring into society. It really helps them to be able to be workaholics and both of them can kind of be bottomless pits when they channel their energy in this way and it helps them to feel so much better and it's better for the people around them okay next area if i were to choose between anxiety and depression i would say cptsd leads with anxiety and bpd leads with depression that doesn't mean that neither of them fills both some cptsds say I really am not a depressed person. I'm more anxious. Like anxiety is my central focus in life. Whereas BPD, they're going to feel more depression because who am I? Who is myself? I didn't bond enough with a caregiver. PTSD may become depressed if they don't have outlets or things aren't going well for them. BPD is probably going to have both. They're going to have a ton of anxiety as well and a ton of depression. If you look very closely at both of them, there are some anxiousness, there's some nervous energy, some shakiness. They can both be kind of nervous people. CPTSD may scream at you when they're feeling really nervous. Borderlines can do the same thing. Okay, so here's an area in which they are similar. Both of these can be deeply caring people, deeply, deeply. Borderline can be deeply caring because they know how it feels to feel really bad and terrible inside. Same thing with CPTSD. They can help a ton of people. They have deep compassion. So CPTSDs will help a ton of people. They will pour into them. They will give them advice. They will coach them. They will help them to feel better. They will meet their needs. They will buy them socks. They will get them food. They will do all of that stuff. Borderlines can look out for people in a similar way. So that's a similarity. They can both be extremely mean. And the meanness comes from agitation, safety needs for CPTSD, and for borderline, it can come from, are you about to leave me? Are you about to leave me? Where are you going? Both of them are hypersensitive, and that's where a lot of the meanness comes from and the emotional dysregulation. You can find yourself walking on eggshells. Am I going to say something that's going to make them snap or go off? You can feel that with both of these people where you have to kind of learn not to react to them reacting all the time because you can get tangled up in that where you're you're in a screaming match with them but instead just trying to have a little bit more patience and understanding really really helps both of these types are driven by a ton of fear and that fear baseness can impact relationships CPTSD. I don't want you to leave me because I'm feeling fearful. I'm afraid for my safety. When there are people that I'm connected with, then I do feel a little bit of abandonment 
with them. Both types are driven by a ton of fear. And if you have extreme fear, like this is not low level fear. This is high, high, high level fear. This is sometimes it's difficult to cope with. So that's going to impact your relationship with other people, right? Because it's going to impact your attitude and how you act and how you come across. You can see a lot of enmeshment with both of these with their offspring. They can be deeply enmeshed. The offspring will always sense an unhappiness, especially if the offspring are not borderline or CPTSD. They're going to always sense this sort of lingering unhappiness or dissatisfaction or things just never quite being right and trying to help them get from A to Z, but it's difficult because both of these people have an impairment that impacts their life greatly, even if they are out in the workplace and very successful the offspring will see a different side of them. There's probably too much closeness, too much worrying about the parent, too much checking. Are they okay today? Are they happy? Are they sad? Are they in a good mood? Are they in a bad mood? Do I need to walk on eggshells? It's like a codependence. The offspring know that these people can go off. So I need to protect myself by always kind of knowing how they're feeling, what's going on. CPTSD, they're gonna always be, shh, be quiet, what was that? What was that noise? That That's how you grow up when you're around CPTSD. Borderline, you're about to leave me and I can't handle that or take that, so I'm gonna act out. What are you doing? Who are you talking to? What's going on now? Because they need to check for signals and signs that you're not going to abandon them always coming up with excuses that don't make sense. The parent-child relationship with a CPTSD person is going to more than likely be more stable than that of a pure borderline. I think the pandemic has probably heightened the acting out behaviors in both of these types. I mean, just you take a moment to think about that and the impact on people without any type of disorder. I mean, it has exacerbated some of these people's behavior to another level. Now, which one of these is gonna have a more more steady relationships, more stable friendships or connections? It's gonna be CPTSD because they're not interacting with them in a, I'm scared you're gonna leave me, so I'm testing you and all of that. They will have more steady, stable, true like connections. They will be able to have conversations and talk and enjoy uh, relationships without the testing. And now I'm trying to see if you're going to leave me or abandon me. So I'm calling your job to find out where you are. And all, they're not going to do all that, generally speaking. So they're going to have a lot more connections that are more sta stable and steady where the people generally don't have to feel like you know, this person is clinging to me for dear life. And that's not to say that they can't be borderline-ish in their behavior when it comes to core people like uh, their daughters or sons or husbands or wives or their mothers or their fathers. They may lean more towards tapping into some abandonment issues and raging with those people. Now they can push people away when they can't regulate their anger or their rage, but it's interesting because they'll be able to control that with certain people, but it could be triggered in really close friendships occasionally that might throw those people off. Like, why are you being so mean? Why are you so aggravated? But overall, they can make a lot of deeper connections with people that can last for years and years, whereas a borderline, they're probably going to have more short-lived relationships even outside of their immediate circle. Both may complain of needing more friends, but CPTSD is they, some of them will complain about not having enough friendships or feeling deeply lonely, but it's because they don't draw people in in the same way that borderlines can draw people in. So it can leave them feeling very 
lonely because there there can still be some level of trust issues or a need for alone time and being with oneself because of safety issues so they they just they differ in the way that they draw people in so this was just my attempt to try to make sense of this for me and for you but please put in the comments what you agree with and what you disagree with and give me your clarity because I'm trying to figure this out because I've watched so many videos that are so unclear for some reason like I just I don't know what they're talking about and there are some other areas that I would like to clear up as well so I'm going to try to do a couple more videos just to help us make sense of these areas check out my book The Workplace Narcissist I think it will help you understand narcissism in a completely different way me kind of working it out in my own head putting it on paper for everyone out there it's on amazon so check it out be sure to like this video subscribe share it with people that you think it will help and i'll see you guys on the next one bye my lovelies